Um, hi. So I've deduced that the process of getting your movie available on Amazon Video must be relatively effortless. Because by the looks of it, they just let anything on there. In the same place where you could rent Parasite or 12 Years a Slave, you can also rent Mama's Foot. Tsunami. B. <laughs> Flyin' Ryan. and 1998's The Midas Touch. This movie was distributed by Multicom Entertainment Group, which seems to be the distributor of several low-budget fantasy films in the 90s. The kind I'd rent on VHS from the library in the early 2000s for some reason. Was this something anybody else did? Anyway, the movie starts with a zooming through the streets while some sick music plays. <laughs> Now I was assuming we'd pull out and see this was a kid skateboarding or something, but then we go through a rope, which would be impossible, so it's probably not that, and then we just go into the mansion and the movie starts. So I guess the movie just opened like that because it looked fucking sick. Only not really. In the mansion lives Billy and his grandma, and those two are living large, my guy. Getting massages, playing video games, riding motorcycles around inside, yelling at butlers, and eating brown soup. Just the height of luxury. Though I can't help but think, how'd they get so rich? Is it possible this is actually all? Hey, boy, William! Oh, a dream. They almost had me there. So in reality, Billy isn't actually rich, and the butler in his dream is really Leon, a bully that forces Billy into doing his homework for him. Hey, we've got an arrangement. You do my work. I don't kill you. Which I feel is something that bullies do a lot in movies and shows, but I don't think ever in real life. I doubt anybody who is unwilling to do homework still cares enough about their academic performance to go out of their way to blackmail someone else into doing their assignments for them. Like at a certain point, isn't just doing the homework easier? Now before I move on, I have to talk about a really terrible movie. 1939's The Wizard of Oz. Why? Well, it starts with Dorothy who lives with her aunt and uncle. Why? That's not normal. Most people live with their mom and dad. What happened to her parents? That's always bothered me so much I can't even pay attention to the rest of the movie. Well, that's not a problem in the Midas touch. Billy lives with his grandma, and we know exactly why. I wish you were still here, Mom and Dad. See, it's easy. Just have your main character announce that he's an orphan, out loud, when he's alone. Duh. So it turns out the reason Billy dreams about being rich is because him and his grandma are actually quite poor. Oh, no, don't be silly. I like my toast uh, black. Like my man. But despite this, Grandma will not allow Billy talking bad about himself. Billy, one of these days, you're gonna grow up and you will have everything. You will be just like King Midas. <laughs> and everything I touch will turn to gold, I know, I know. In oh, that sounded natural, and definitely wasn't for any kids watching who might not know who King Midas is. While on his way to school, Billy is joined by Hannah, who just got a new bike. Um, uh, my dad just bought it for me yesterday. What's wrong with your old one? Uh, it was a piece of trash. Well, no offense or anything. Hey Hannah, that wasn't offensive until you said no offense. Nothing you said before that implied his bike was a piece of trash. Bitch. Billy's run-ins with bullies don't improve at school, where he's picked on by a guy who must be bad news because he's wearing a blue bandana and a spider t-shirt. But luckily the bully from earlier, Leon, shows up to defend him. do without me around, right? So he makes death threats to Billy, but also protects him from other bullies. If others are also messing with Billy, is it bad for Leon's reputation? Kind of like if your girlfriend has a lot of guy friends? Also, sorry to get off topic, but why was spiky hair ever a thing? This trend was a little before my time, so can anyone older than me explain the appeal of hair that's hard and pointy? But it seems Leon loses all respect for Billy after he's caught turning in an assignment he didn't do. You're dead meat. Over the paper. You're not getting out of this one, bonehead. So after school, when Leon's talking to some other kids about how tough he is. Listen, wimp. The bravest guy in this neighborhood. I come from a long line of brave men. My dad was a war hero. My granddad was a war hero. My grandma was a war hero. Because I'm a stud. 
I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> and they don't believe him. The group dares him to go steal an hourglass from a local house where a witch is rumored to live. This house was established in an earlier scene with Billy and Hannah, but I didn't mention it because there was nothing for me to make fun of. I'm spending my 20s watching the Midas Touch, so excuse me if I can't make a joke about every fucking scene. So because Leon blames Billy for him getting caught cheating, he forces Billy to return the hourglass in his place. Once inside the house, Billy has trouble staying quiet. What's even creaking there? There aren't even any visible floorboards. That floor is actually in really good shape. It turns out the residence really does house a witch, but she doesn't want to hurt Billy. So what are you gonna do to me? Grant you a wish! Can't you just let me go? Please. Make a wish, boy, make a wish. I don't know. I just kind of want to leave. <laughs> I love the honesty. However, he of course wishes to be King Midas. She seemingly grants the wish and lets him go. So the next morning, he realizes the wish came true when, upon touching them, his hamster and hat turn to gold. <laughs> but like, he also touches his blanket and his clothes and his grandma even, and nothing happens. Like, whatever. Okay, the power works inconsistently. This movie's stupid. I don't care. <sighs> what am I doing? Leon confronts Billy for not retrieving the hourglass, but Hannah comes to Billy's rescue. Billy shows them the power the witch gave him, and suddenly, Leon isn't quite as hard on him. You know, Billy, I can offer you something much more than friendship. Protection. Guidance. Stupidity. Can we lose the dame? Dame? I get this is a kid's movie, so it's not like he could call her a bitch or anything, but dame? What is this, the 1950s? Hey, fella, how about we lose the dame and have a cat's night down at the segregated soda fountain? They go up to Leon's treehouse, which is another thing that's so common in kids' movies for some reason, but I feel most kids never actually had. But Leon starts imagining what they can do. Look, Billy, this is the way I see it. You play your cards right, and you could be the most richest, famous person in the world. You can do anything. Go to the moon. Run for president. No, he couldn't. How does turning things into gold equate into becoming president? He's not even 35. All Billy really wants, though, is to be able to afford a heart transplant for his grandma. So Leon goes to pawn off some gold items while Hannah waits outside with Billy, who isn't feeling too well. Hey, Billy, you okay? I'm okay. I just feel kind of weirded out. What's wrong? You look kind of yellow. Um, can she say that? The wacky pawn shop owners convince Leon to part with the gold items for only $200. And I'm gonna be honest, these kind of characters make my job really hard because there are only so many ways I can comment on when a movie is trying to be funny and isn't. Oh, oh I'm okay, I'm alright, I'm okay, I'm okay. I feel a lot of 90s kids movies were trying to replicate the success of the burglars in Home Alone by also having some sort of comic relief criminals. But I think what they didn't realize is we didn't like that Harry and Marv were criminals. We liked that they were fucking funny. So realizing that they still haven't made nearly enough money to afford surgery for Billy's grandma, Billy transforms some more items causing him to pass out for a moment. And this comedy film has its first funny joke. If anything happens to me, I want you to take care of my grandma. You want me to kill your grandma? No, I'm not that kind of take care of. Billy comes home to find his grandma has had a medical episode. She's okay, but asks Billy for some water, and he turns her to gold. He turns his grandma to gold. Ah! Check her into a gold folks home, I guess. Oh my gosh. Dave Chappelle, are you here to induct me into the Comedian's Hall of Fame? Yeah, man. Meanwhile, Leon goes to the witch lady himself to request the same ability she gifted Billy. But she says he's not deserving of such power and has something else in mind for him. But we don't get to see what it is before we cut back to the funny pawn shop owners who are trying to break into Billy's house, I guess expecting to find more gold items. Upstairs, upstairs apartment. I knew that. I was just checking out my new crowbar here, making sure it all looked real good, working perfect. And you know, it's at this part in the movie where I really started to feel bad for the actors here. Their names are David Jeremiah and Marla Katowski. I'm sure they're experienced actors that were just looking for some paid work, and you know, they're not A-listers or anything, so they probably couldn't feel that they had the authority to change any of their lines or ask if they could play these scenes differently. That window! It's open! Ow! Hey! I have an idea! Why don't we go in through that window? So, David, Marla, if you're watching, 
Just know, when I say I would rather be lobotomized, castrated, and cheated out of my shares in a multi-million dollar company that I helped create, than watch another second of your performance, just try not to take it personally. So in the house, they discover the gilded body of Billy's grandma and steal it to liquidize and sell her piece by piece. And this really weird animated shot is used. <laughs> What was the point of that? Billy and Hannah go to the witch's house to see if she can help turn Billy's grandma back, and we discover what she did to Leon was make him polite, which got rid of his spiky hair! I actually wrote my complaints about his hair before I knew this was gonna happen, so it's like they knew. Billy begs the witch to take away his powers and restore his grandma, but she tells him only he can do that, and then scares him away with a terrible CGI tiger statue. Out of options, they go to the library to read about the original King Midas. It's closed, but they're able to break in because the security guard is asleep. And I'm just gonna say, I don't think libraries have night guards. What's the worst people could do if they broke in? Steal books they could legally check out for free? If Billy's situation is anything like the King Midas of myth, they realize he has to retouch everything he's turned to gold so far in order. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was close. close. Looks like they only had enough in the budget for one character to turn to gold. They realize they need to do this quickly because Billy's excessive use of his power is slowly turning him to gold. They leave and the security guard finds the book Billy accidentally transformed, which he's a little too excited about. <sighs> Later, the kids spot the pawn shop owners with Billy's grandma on the way to melt her down. And I don't know what happened between the last scene with them and now, but they actually started managing to get a couple of chuckles out of me. You know, if Ma could see us now, she'd be so proud. Why? Because we're, like, working together for the first time without fighting? No, because we finally stole something good! Just kidding. They begin the process of melting Grandma down, and I'm not giving the movie any credit because this is unintentional, but the image of this gold Grandma mannequin just swinging there is pretty funny. <laughs> The kids come in and knock the crooks out with a bowling ball, of course. But it's too late, as Billy's grandma melts. So before I say what obviously ends up happening, wouldn't it be funny if they couldn't change her back, and they decide to still sell her gold remains because it's what she would've wanted for Billy? There have been kids' movies with darker endings, who knows? But that's not what happens. They steal the burglar's car to bring the buckets of grandma back to her house where she originally turned to gold. I'd make a joke about a middle schooler being able to steal a car, but since I gave Finding Dory a pass for an octopus driving, I guess this movie gets one too. They pour the gold out into the bathtub, and it's clearly just gold paint. But before he can turn his grandma back, the pawn shop owners barge in, take hold of them, and threaten to drain the bathtub if Billy doesn't tell them where he got so much gold. He explains his abilities, but they don't believe him, so he tells the sister to touch his finger. Now I know they've painted these characters as incompetent, but he literally just explains that everything he touches turned to gold, yet she's so willing to touch him. Well, not like, touch him, touch him, touch his finger. She obviously turns to gold, causing her brother to faint and giving Billy the opportunity to bring his grandma back. Yay! The pawn shop owners are arrested, but not everything's okay yet. Guys, my whole body's turning stiff. Uh, boner joke. Based on the King Midas myth, they think to prevent Billy from turning into gold, they have to take him to a river. But his condition is so bad, they have to carry him in. And they fucking turn him back. Did you think they wouldn't? Did you think they wouldn't turn him back? And the witch gives Billy a new bike and a check to buy his grandma a new heart. She could have just done that to start without ever giving him the power to turn items into gold, but cool, I guess. So the Midas touch, you know, I try my best to find the positive in situations, but there are really very few redeeming qualities to this one, even on a so bad it's good level. The child acting and very 90s dialogue is all just bad enough to bore, but not entertain me. Overall, I'd give it three golden grandmas out of 10. Yo, yo, yo! So upon recording this, uh, I think this is gonna be a pretty funny one. I think this was a funny video. So uh, if you agree, uh, maybe hit that like button. I don't know. And if you liked it, also maybe subscribe while you're down there. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, I just really appreciate it. Uh...